Hello, West Michigan. Welcome back to yet another episode of Forever Young. I get to be the guest host today, Anne Marie. And of course, I'm with Mr. Eric Johnson, who is the owner manage, manager of all three Health Hut stores um, North Muskegon, Grand Haven, and here in on Henry Street in Muskegon. That is where we're filming today in the wonderful deli, right? Yeah. Yeah. They have a ton of good stuff in the deli, which we're going to show you later because I always get a treat every time I do the show. I get to pick a treat. But right now, before we get into our topic, I do have to say something. I came to the program tonight, very busy day for both of us, and we're both a little bit tired. And I said to Eric, Eric, I like to, to drink. I, I like energy drinks, but I don't want to drink them. I know they're not good for me, and I know I need to stay away from commercial energy drinks and he handed me this show this to everybody yeah here. this is a Sambazon um, this is a Sambazon light and tell me what light obviously means it has less calories right yeah it, 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 it has uh, a, lot, a lot less sugar and it's sweetened with uh, stevia now tell me what makes a Sambazon different than a commercial energy drink well it doesn't have any of the um, it doesn't have any synthetic caffeine in it okay and it's a, it's a lot lower sugar than most energy drinks this whole can only has 60 calories in the whole can really yeah that's excellent but of, of those calories half of them come from Asahi juice which is a uh, High antioxidant, oh, and where is high that in berry? phytonutrients, oh. good for the heart, by the way. Where is that acai berry? berry? And most of it's in Brazil. Is it? Because mm -hmm. you hear really good stuff about it. This is clarified. They take the fat out of it because acai is one of the only uh, uh, berries in the world that's high in fat. Uh -huh. So, but the fat would get like stuck on the side of the can. So they actually take out the fat and they clarify it. Okay. You still get all of, like the eye benefits and the antioxidant benefits. Really? And it tastes it tastes really good. It yeah. has like a it has like a blueberry berry flavor. Now as you said to me, drinking caffeine at all will get you you become addicted to caffeine. It's just something I mean you can't get away from that. Yeah. Correct? Right, no. It, but you just wanna try to watch what you get and don't do this like every day. Right. right. But but if you need a pickup, which I do, this is what we're gonna do here. It's not quite as sweet as some uh, some of them. See if you like it or not. Yeah, it's very good. It almost tastes like raspberry, mm -hmm. like a yeah, yeah like a it's wild got a berry. raspberry flavor too. It's very good. Yeah, very good. I like it a little bit sweeter, so I actually add a little bit of stevia to it. Mm. But um, I think it's I think it's pretty good. It is very good. Steve is good at sweetening anything, by the way. Yeah. So and it's also got erythritol too. Erythritol. Yeah. That's Our topic one. today, right? Our topic is going to be heart disease and no, cholesterol. It's going to be busting the myths of heart disease and cholesterol. Okay. And before we bust the myths of heart disease and cholesterol, we need to remind you all once again that we are not doctors. This is an opinion only. Oh, yeah. It's just, which you can choose, as Miss Polly always said, to refuse or use, right? Right. You can choose to refuse or use. Yeah. And we hope that you use because it makes a lot of or sense. Or just do your own research. Just do more of your own research. We're just trying to uh, sort of uh, uh, pique your curiosity to do more research. And let me tell you what actually inspired this show, viewers. Um, Sandy, which many of you will remember, is my mother and um, is on sabbatical right now <laughs> because she just got a cochlear implant last year. But... Uh, has hosted the programs for several years and um, her, her own show, in fact. Um, she was diagnosed with high cholesterol. She's actually had it for several years, but it was kind of in the stages where they were saying, you need to get this under control or you're going to have to go on something. Well, now they've, she's at the stage where they have told her they feel that she should go on a medication. She's concerned. She's not crazy about going on a statin drug and wanted to see if there was another alternative method that she might try. So I approached Eric and I asked him what is a naturopathic treatment for this. Once again, not telling you to not seek medical, that we are not doctors, but this is just naturopathic advice, right? Yes, right. So how about if you start with that, our conversation? Okay. And, and, and if you explain to me basically. Well, it turns out from research done in multiple countries in Europe and in Asia and this country, women who start on statin drugs actually have a higher rate of uh, death from cardiac uh, uh, events. No kidding. Not a lower, but a higher rate from statin drugs. What about their lifespan? Does it do anything? Men is really, it's more much more confusing. With women, it's clear cut. They actually have a higher rate of uh, cardiac death How when they've been the on a statin span? drug. The life their lifespan is shortened by, by uh, statin drugs. Really? Yes, yeah, so there's numerous studies showing that. Wow. So that's confusing because they basically say that if your cholesterol is, if, I, if I'm correct, over 200, it's high. Right. And I think sometimes that number tends to even drop lower. But when your cholesterol is running around 300, like it tends to do in my family, 
they're saying that you absolutely have to get on these drugs. Now, obviously, people have, there's a lot of schools of thought on this. You know, maybe some people might think it's a, it's a money-making thing. I just look at the actual statistics published, you know, the, the, there's many, many studies. The women who get on statin drugs actually have a higher rate of cardiac death. Mm. Not a lower rate, but a higher rate of cardiac death. So what, I know that's not good news for the, if you wanna, the common, uh, you know, the common myth, but. If you want to go for a natural treatment. What, yeah, you know? well, you need to focus on more than just cholesterol. Okay. You need to focus on artery health and uh, the amount of inflammation that's being built up in, in the cellular walls and the bloodstream. Okay. Um, you need to worry about the homocysteine level. You need to worry about um, uh, their hormone balance. That's okay. really important uh, for heart health in women. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, getting exercise. Women that have uh, one of the, uh, the best things they can do is to. Uh, do more physical exercise. My mother is actually very active. She exercises every day. Now, she's not in so much into cardio exercise. She does more of the tightening, trimming. Pilates type stuff. Yeah, that type of thing. She's not really into cardio workout, though. Yeah, but even Pilates, a, a, a aggressive Pilates routine is a cardio workout. Well, hers actually isn't Pilates, though. Basically, she's got her own little regime. She has these little stretchy, I call them her torture devices, you know, where you pull them apart oh, and yeah, you do the, this type of thing. The exercise and you do bands. The leg, yeah, and leg lifts and, you know, her But sits. even that will get the heart pumping. Anything that gets the heart pumping above, you know. It makes you sweat. Into the 80% zone is, is good for the heart. But don't you have to maintain it for 30 to 40 minutes to make it an actual workout? or? Uh, no, you, they, you get cardiac benefit even after 20 minutes. So if you can just it for 20 minutes actually you're better off to do 20 minutes every day or even every other day than than to get you know have to think well i gotta do 40 minutes but i don't have time to do 40 minutes and i get too tired after 40 minutes so then what is the answer for these people who do for instance my father also um they they do exercise regularly but yet the cholesterol is still sky high Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why would the cholesterol sky high? We got to look at why the why is the cholesterol sky high? Exactly. What you reasons know? could there be? What factors? Oh, there's all kinds of factors. Um, uh, you, the, the liver could be not functioning properly, and okay. so um, there could be uh, a problem with the liver. Um, so we need to do like a, um, uh, do a liver cleanse. Or also, they could be just too much saturated fat hitting the liver, causing too much cholesterol to be spilled out. A lot of them is just way too much saturated fat. I would bring his saturated fat, particularly from meats and dairy, down. Let's explain to me again, saturated fat. Give me the difference between saturated and unsaturated. What has saturated fat? Yeah, these are, I'm talking about long chain saturated fats, the kind found in red meat and um, in dairy, in high fat dairy products. Now, what about low fat dairy? Actually, low-fat dairy has an increased risk of cardiac damage, so you're almost better off. I, look, the studies actually are different. They actually show that people that get enough but not too much higher fat dairy actually do better than people on low-fat dairy. Now, I don't know why that is, but I, I mean, I could look it up, but there's, that seems to be a problem. Now, when you're saying dairy, are you also including eggs, or are you just thinking of milk and No, dairy? I'm only talking about dairy, milk, milk-type okay. products. So eggs don't count? No. What if a person were to eliminate dairy and do either soy or almond? Yeah, that's better. You just you, you you need a certain amount of saturated fat, even the long chain saturated fat found in these foods. But you know, it's it's a mostly omega six and mix six and nine, and most people are way too dominant in those. Mm-hmm. And you need it, but it's just too much. What are the big culprits? Is it is it traditionally obviously if you the American diet is loaded with culprits? Obviously, we our fried food, our fast food. Um, Right. Is it, like if you're gonna eat meat, because most people aren't gonna wanna stop eating meat. I could see people limiting their red meat. Yeah, most people just eat, they eat twice as much uh, meat as they should be eating, twice as much. The portions are too big, is from what I understand. The portions are too big and it's happening too often and uh, you know, on a day, if you if you got enough protein during the day, like enough people satisfy all their protein needs after lunch, but then they go on to uh, to dinner and then that's the overload part. Something that I was impressed with, I have some friends who actually a chef who um, uh, spent a, a great deal of time, he actually was raised in Africa, in Eritrea, and then he uh, worked over in, in the Philippines and in Asia, and basically said to me that over there, the serving says what people don't realize is they eat much less meat. Meat is more of a flavoring, whereas here we've got to have the gargantuan steaks. Right, the meat is the main course rather than just the... Yeah. The, the kind of the side dish. Right, and, and over there it's a flavoring. It's much, much less. And I wonder what the statistics on cholesterol are in Asia. Honestly, I've never checked nothing. Well, we, we had a, um, for a while when my mother had some, um, after some surgeries, we had a, a housekeeper and she was from Asia. Mm-hmm. 
she was from um, uh, Korea, and she would take a piece of meat and like one like one steak, and she would feed. She'd make enough food for uh, the four of us plus another whole meal. So she'd make eight servings from one steak. Wow. Where it, in America traditionally a steak is each person gets, gets a, steak a steak at yeah. the meal. And it's but not she, always a four ounce one either. It's usually an eight ounce, ten ounce. <laughs> yeah. But she could take, you know, say a six ounce steak and she could make eight servings of food that was really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, because she would mix it with maybe a little bit of tofu, maybe some garbanzo beans, and then put other flavorings in it. Have we seen any statistics on cholesterol in heart disease in mm -hmm. Asians? Uh, well, there's like the China study is really, uh, really, really beneficial. Okay. Uh, they're still they're still working on uh, the raw data, actually coming up with conclusions on the raw data. But um, well, I, we can talk about the next segment. Yes, what what turns out to be the real culprit, which is what we'll talk about in the next segment. So in the next segment, the real culprit. More on our China study. Once again, I'm Anne Marie with Eric Johnson. We are at the Health Hut, and we'll be coming at you with more Forever Young on the Living Green series in just a moment.